Hey, 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 welcome back to Just Me, Dr. Trish Lee, on the podcast Porn Brain Rewire. I have not been here by myself in a while, so I am psyched to be here to share some cool concepts about dopamine, uh, what a new colleague of mine calls the D word, and talking about how dopamine in its different states really is a driving force behind porn use. So we don't have to think of dopamine as a dirty word. Like my new colleague, if you're listening, thinks about it. And we were in the car and I told him, so if you're listening, friend, I told him that he thinks we think so differently about all of this stuff, but we actually think the exact same. And I told him to email me when he figures out that we are totally on the same page, we just talk about it differently. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to take the dirty out of the D word dopamine. Dopamine is a really important driving factor behind porn use and screen brain, as I'm calling it these days, in terms of social media use, in terms of going on and watching videos online, seeking and searching behavior, which you can do on Netflix or on pornography. Um, Dopamine plays a huge role in how crappy you feel when you're out of the screen. So when you're in the world and your kids are stressing you out and you look at your partner like, why did I ever uh, wanna be with you? That's a deficit in dopamine. So what we're gonna talk about in this episode is dopamine and its link to porn use and screen brain in general. And then we're gonna talk about the drips the deluge, the deficits, and the dungeon. Oh my. So let's dig in and let's talk about first how dopamine, what it is, and how it is even at play in this whole situation. Okay, so dopamine is a very important neurotransmitter in your brain for pleasure, but it's actually not the neurotransmitter of pleasure. It's the neurotransmitter of pleasure seeking pleasure seeking write that down because pleasure seeking means it's insatiable it can't be satiated there's never enough of it the more dopamine you get the more you want the more dopamine you get then when dopamine's not in your system at high levels you don't feel good and you will do just about anything to get back to the point of feeling good with all that dopamine in your system so it's very crucial. It, you know, I know people don't like to talk about it because sometimes the, the concept of dopamine might feel that it's over their head, but it's not. It's the pleasure-seeking neurochemical and you can feel it in your brain. And I'm gonna teach you in this episode how to feel when the drip starts, how to feel when the deluge starts cranking. Deluge means flood, but I obviously I like sticking with the D words here for easy concepts. Deluge means flood, that flood of dopamine into your system. The dopamine deficit when it's all dried up and you don't feel good anymore in the dungeon being locked in that dungeon after you've had a porn session feeling good numbed out feeling like you never want to come out of it putting that padlock on the dungeon door yourself going this is too good i don't want to go back to life there's no dopamine there so we'll talk about it okay so dopamine pleasure seeking never enough neurochemical the way that it becomes insatiable or never enough is that when you were young, most people, and you were exposed to pornography, your brain got this huge deluge, flood of dopamine that it had never felt before. And remember, porn's a super normal stimulus, the highest level super normal stimulus. So when you felt that, there was no way you could get that feeling from the world. It doesn't exist. It's super normal. So your brain wanted it again, and the only place it could get it is pornography, which led you back again. When you went back again, your brain recalibrated itself, so now it needs more dopamine to feel the same as you did that first time. So even in two exposures, your brain can rewire itself, so you forever will need higher levels of dopamine to feel good. 
That's what creates the dopamine deficit in your life in a simplistic form. I call that the seeds of addiction because it's planted when you're young and we know from the science, the younger you're exposed to pornography, the more difficult it will be to leave it behind for most people. And it's because those seeds were planted when you were young and then you watered those seeds across a longer amount of time across your lifetime. And then of course, how often you water the seeds and how long you water the seeds each time, frequency, consistency, length of sessions, the intensity of the watering, intensity of the pornography that you watch, they all come into play. But those seeds were planted when you were young. That dopamine deluge was felt when you were young and it changed your brain. So let's just go off track for one second and then I promise you we'll get back on track. If we go off track for a second and think about neurological development at the age of 10, we'll just say. So you are exposed to porn when you're 10 and now your brain rewired itself to need all this dopamine. If you had never been exposed to porn, your brain would have developed differently. The neural pathways for dopamine and dopamine seeking wouldn't be traversed. The seeds would not have been planted. So this really becomes a neurodevelopmental situation. That is why I am here. Because when you leave porn behind, you can rewire your brain through the beauty of neuroplasticity. That's what we're going to capitalize on. Okay, so back to what's going on. So we talk about how your brain was exposed to pornography when you were young. It created the desire to go back for the dopamine deluge. Now let's fast forward to today. If you've been consuming porn frequently, consistently, and especially with any level of intensity, what will happen for you is you will feel a dopamine drip in your brain up at the top of a porn brain cycle. So what that means is you'll feel the drip and the drip will say to you, it's the hijacker in that voice in your head, that drip will say to you, I've got an absolutely brilliant idea. Let's watch some porn. That would feel good. When you hear that voice, I want you to think of it like a drip, a little dropper full of dopamine being squirted into your brain, a little drip of dopamine. And when you feel that drip, what science shows is once the drip starts, your brain will chase down the deluge. It's going to keep taking you towards that deluge until it gets it. Of course, this is before you do all the beautiful things to capitalize on neuroplasticity. But for right now, when you feel that dropper full, that drip of dopamine, it's essential that you run, not walk away from that drip. Associate that drip with something else. That's the pivot plan. So your brain goes, let's watch porn. And you go, no way, dude, we're gonna do something else. And you're gonna brain hack this so that you associate that dopamine drip with something else in your world. You love basketball, go play basketball. You love darts, shoot some darts. You have a partner and you think she's the cat's pajamas, call her. Because now you're gonna brain hack your brain into thinking that dopamine drip has to do with your life and the world. No, it's not gonna work the first time. Yes, it's going to help over time. So don't follow the dopamine drip towards the deluge. The deluge is a flood. So it's like taking that dopamine dam away and the dopamine deluge comes a flooding. So that leads you towards, the more drips you have, you're gonna lead you towards a porn session. So now you can feel the flood coming even before you open your browser. When you're getting ready, when you've already decided, okay, hijacker, that is a brilliant idea. Let's go do this. When you make that decision, the dam is starting to be broken and the, del the deluge of dopamine is starting. You'll feel it. You're, you will feel better. Your brain will feel great even before you hit that easy button. But when you go hit that easy button and you begin to consume porn, especially if you couple it with masturbation, that dopamine is going to flood your system. And most times people will stay with that until it feels completely flooded. And hopefully you're not edging because edging is coming back without getting to culmination, uh, co coming back and back and back and lingering your brain in the dopamine deluge state. Very dangerous because you're really desensitizing the reward center in your brain with all that dopamine. So you feel all that dopamine, you're feeling really numbed out and then you know, through porn and masturbation, you orgasm 
and you lock yourself in the dopamine dungeon. You want to put that lock in and stay there for a while, just feeling all that dopamine in your system. When I work with people in my neurofeedback coaching program, I'm able to see all of their muse, uh, that's the headband, um, and I'll make sure I put the link down below where you can get 15% off, but the headband that I encourage people to use, I can see their brain training sessions. After a relapse, their brain will be 97% calm. It's artificially induced. It's a numbed out brain, a 97% calm brain that the day before was 4% calm. That's dangerous stuff. That's the dopamine dungeon. And what it feels like is lingering in those fantasy thoughts, letting the dopamine just rush through and kind of slow down in your system. A new client of mine who named the dopamine dungeon, so thank you, dear friend. Um, I loved that term. The second he said it, I'm like, I need to borrow that because it's amazing. But he was saying that he's trapped in fantasy and that there's just no desire to leave, no motivation to go back to the world. Like that is just the place to stay because nothing matters. But just think about it as an internalized drug addiction because you're giving your brain this massive amount of dopamine that it shouldn't have. And it shouldn't have all at one time. And it's desensitizing the reward center in your brain, making it so that you're always going to need that amount to feel good. It creates the deficit in your real world. When you go back to the world, there could never be the same amount of dopamine. Literally never because it's a super normal stimulus. So everything's disappointing in your world. It leads to depression. It leads to anxiety. It leads to lack of motivation. It leads to a whole host of mental and physical problems. It leads to erectile dysfunction, to premature or delayed, especially delayed ejaculation. All the stuff that you're struggling with and suffering from has to do with this dopamine deluge and the dopamine dungeon. So we got to unlock that door and get you out. In this dopamine dungeon state, it's literally like you're in a dungeon. You can't get out and you can't move. There's minimal activity. You're just lounging around enjoying the feeling while it damages your brain. It's also knocking out the frontal lobe, making it so that you can't make a plan and you can't be motivated enough to get your booty up and go do something productive. The purpose is sucked out of your life. Think of it as a dungeon. You're locked in the dungeon that is keeping you from your true potential. I know it sounds dramatic, but it's true. And I've worked with thousands, thousands and thousands of people now, thankfully, being able to help them get out of the dungeon. Okay, so we had drips that lead you towards the deluge. We have the dungeon that you get locked in after a porn session. Now it's time to get back to life. So you pull yourself out of that dungeon-y state, and now it's time to go to work. You have brain fog. It's difficult to perform your best. Many people struggle at work, get in trouble at work, possibly lose their jobs. Uh, your brain has hit the dopamine deficit state. So there's no way there could be enough dopamine there to feel good. And there's an increase in cortisol, the stress hormone. So in fact, not only do you not feel good, you feel bad. You're more stressed out than ever because there's low dopamine and high cortisol. So if you feel cranky and irritable in your life and you don't know why, it is because of porn use. It is, I tell you. I share that with you out of the bottom of my heart so that you can understand it is the thing that is making your life worse. It is the thing that is pulling you back into the screen. It's also the thing that's pushing you back into the screen by increasing your stress. So you might perceive everything as an attack towards you. You might have more anger and irritability. Your kids are annoying. Your partner is irritating, but they may not have changed at all. It is the state of affairs that has changed by being in a dopamine deficit. It's a problem. So I want you to know you have to break the dopamine deluge and the dopamine dungeon to get rid of the dopamine deficit state in your life. Okay, so that's basically a porn addiction cycle. It starts with a trigger, which is usually a stressor. It might be boredom, but usually it's stress. Then it leads to the drip in your brain to offset that stress. I have a good idea, let's watch porn. Then the flood starts going as your brain knows you're going to. So the flood starts going, then you get locked in the dungeon, you feel great, 
You push yourself out of the dungeon, you feel like garbage, feeling like garbage, pulls you and pushes you back into the screen and the cycle never ends. Now, it'd be one thing if the cycle just stayed like that, but it doesn't. There's no such thing as a horizontal spiral. There's only a downward spiral or an upward spiral. And if you stay in the screen, you will be in a continual downward spiral. Down, down, down. What does that look like in actuality? You will begin to feel worse and worse, and you will also need to go into the screen more and more because of it. It will impact your relationship because this is how dudes get caught, honestly. And I don't love that terminology, like get caught, because it is something you're hiding. So it's not your partner who's catching you, it's you who is not being honest with your behaviors within your relationship that then allows you to be you know, found out, but it's not your partner catching you. It's you getting into this narcissistic bubble of constant self-pleasure seeking that then your guard comes down and in walks your partner during one of your sessions. And people are always like, I don't know how it happened. And actually in the moment, I didn't even care. That's what people tell me all the time. My brain was so numbed out, I didn't even care. I just looked at her. And that's devastating for everybody because first of all, you'll be caught up in that loop and eventually you'll realize you don't want to be in that loop, but it's very difficult to come out of it. And now there's damage to your relationship. But I'm here to tell you that when there's rupture, a damage to your relationship, there can be repair. And when there's rupture and repair, you know what can happen? You can have a better relationship than ever. So take the opportunity to do that if you have been in the position where you were consuming pornography or masturbating and your partner found you. Okay, so then that is how your relationships impacted. A whole bunch of relationship problems come out of it. Even if you never get caught, there's still so many relationship problems. The irritability and the anger that you have throws your partner off, sex becomes weird, you're hypersexual, which then leads her to be hyposexual. And that's not my opinion, just so that you remember that at the core of porn use is something that's called compulsive hypersexual behavior disorder. It literally means that your brain keeps thinking about sex and porn in an OCD type of fashion. It's a compulsion to go back to the behavior watching porn and masturbating to get rid of the obsessive thoughts about sex. So your brain's caught up in this and you might not even know it, but your partner senses it because sex got weird, your interactions got weird, and most partners don't want to be the object that's being used by someone in a hypersexual mode. So sex breaks down, your relationship's impaired, your kids don't know which version they're going to get of you. Dr. Jekyll, who has his fix of dopamine, or Mr. Hyde, who needs one. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, if you remember from the novella, I forget what year it was made, but Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dr. Jekyll was a very upstanding citizen and he always looked like he had his action together and Mr. Hyde was ravenous and he was raging and he always was compulsively looking for sex and had violence in his life, but they were a dichotomy of the same person. And over time, Mr. Hyde became the one who was out more than Dr. Jekyll. And both of them are just masks of the same person underneath their true self, their full potential. But that's the idea. So sometimes you're happy and happy-go-lucky. Other times you're angry because you need a dopamine fix. So your kids scatter because they don't know which version they're going to get. Your friends scatter because they don't know what version they're going to get. It leads to all of this. So it impairs your relationships, not only with your partner, but with your friends and with your family, which then there's a ripple effect out to the people that you work with. There's a ripple effect out to your community and to the collective consciousness, all of us. So we know that when you consume pornography, it fills you with shame and it's built on a shame cycle. Shame's the lowest level energy in the electromagnetic field of your body. It resonates off of you. And when you are in this negative energy field, it repels people and people wanna stay away from you and it actually creates more negative energy. So through Porn Brain Rewire, when you increase and improve the energy field in your brain and your body, you literally can create this positive ripple effect in your own life and across the world, which I love that, and it's true. So 
Now, how else does this impact you? Is that we said that you're gonna hit a dopamine deficit after the dungeon. The deficit is gonna make you look for dopamine anywhere if you can't get back into the screen. And this is where more checking out of people, more objectification of people, maybe going on social media more just to look at stills, um, maybe looking at lingerie uh, ads, trying to get a dopamine drip anywhere you can because you can't get back to the deluge. So if you've ever felt that, like that you're looking at people more and you just can't stop it, or if your partner has said that to you, your brain's in this dopamine deficit state where it's looking for the drips anywhere it can get it because it can't get the deluge for a while. So think about that, be cognizant, be aware that your brain's looking for its drug of choice, dopamine, which it, which it really is a drug, but it's a healthy one when you're using it right. Okay, let's transition into what does using it right look like, and then we'll wrap things up for the day. So we said that porn is a super normal stimulus. It's much too high of levels of dopamine, and especially if you linger in that state, it's too high of levels for too long. So the goal of my program and a porn brain rewire is to recalibrate your brain so it only craves and wants and is happy and satiated with the lower healthy levels of dopamine plus serotonin, which is the neurotransmitter for happiness and joy. It doesn't hit the nervous system as hard, but it lingers around longer than dopamine. And the neurotransmitter oxytocin, which is the neurotransmitter of love, labor, and lust. It connects you to your partner. We wanna disconnect you from porn and yourself through masturbation and connect you to a real live human honey that you can ride off into the sunset have an amazing fun life with and tons of great sex. So that's the goal, teaching your brain to want lower dopamine plus serotonin plus oxytocin in your world. So we already said you can use a brain hack that anytime you feel the drip, associate it with something in your immediate environment and art and nature are really easy ways to do that because just about any indoor facility that you go to will have some art on the wall and any outdoor place is going to have nature. So if you look at the piece of art and you associate the dopamine with your world, you'll start brain hacking it. You can keep a picture in your pocket of your honey or your pet lizard, anything that's going to bring you joy and happiness, but start associating the dopamine you feel in your brain with your life instead of with sex or body parts. That's a really good hack to try to bring you back out of that. But that's just a hack. The solution is creating a defensive plan to run, not walk when you feel that dopamine drip. Go do something in your world that you enjoy that gives your brain as much dopamine as possible, even if it has to be habit replacement in the short run. Uh, TV, video games, not that I want you playing lots of them, but TV or video games is also giving your brain dopamine within the screen. So that's just kind of like one notch down from the super normal stimulus of porn. It still is in the screen brain category, category, but it's much better for now. Then you can transition to basketball or pool or um, running. Hopefully you're doing some of those things anyways, activities that are true and use your mind, your body and your true self in the world. But in desperation, you can get a show going. I've been watching Ted Lasso on Apple TV. What a beautiful show. It always has a positive message. It's funny. It's actually very artistically put together, very low in the trigger category. Awesome show. So check that out because I've really been enjoying it. Uh, I took a video of my husband who was snoring next to me last night when we watched it. And then he like, you know, pretended to watch it again. I'm like, dude, you better sleep for like five minutes, but it was fun. Okay. So then, uh, that's just the defensive plan. The offensive plan is make a plan to flexibly schedule your life so you can get dopamine, but I don't want you chasing down as much dopamine as possible for the rest of your life. You might need to do that in the short run. In the long run, you wanna have a balanced life of dopamine producing activities, serotonin producing activities, like a beautiful sunrise or a beautiful sunset, something like that, something that, is longer lived, sitting with your family, uh, 
driving, I was driving with my beautiful daughter, Sersha, the other day, and we were just laughing about nothing. And she and I have an amazing thing that we can do. She rides horses. So she will sit next to me just talking about horses the whole way there for like 30 minutes, which I can only talk. We've already talked about it for like hours each day. So then I'll have my conversation too, which usually is existential stuff. Uh, what was the existential thing I said yesterday? It doesn't matter, but I'll think of it maybe. But then what we were doing is she'll carry on the conversation about horses and I'll carry on the deep, meaningful care conversation. And I'll say something, but then she'll reply with something about horses and then I'll add something to mine. And I said to her, we have this amazing knack of having two conversations together without having to hijack each other's conversation. But then we will add to each other's conversation. And we were cracking up. We were having the best time, but it was just low key. It's not like I was getting tons of pleasure. I was getting tons of happiness from it. We rolled down our windows. We screamed weird things out the windows, which she cracks up because she's like, Patty, you're so weird. She calls me Patty. Patty, you're so weird. And, uh, you know, it was really fun. Fun in a low-key way. Serotonin and oxytocin connecting me to that beautiful girl. Uh, so, okay. That's the key. Find that in your life. Balance your life across work that you love, people you love being with that you can just be silly and fun and just let your hair down and do the hobbies that you love. Sersh and I went out on the lake paddle boarding. Uh, it's hard to get teenagers to do things with me anymore. Actually, Seamus and I went driving the other day. I spent time with all of them. Uh, but it's just such joy, you know, out in nature and paddleboard. Seamus is learning to drive, so we took my husband's car, who he drives a Maserati. And of course, Seamus thinks he's the shizzle driving a Maserati. I drove a piece of junk when I learned how to drive. So this kid driving a Maserati, taking all these selfies, you know, Maserati cars have about 5,000 logos on them. So, uh, but it was really fun as his mom sitting in the, in the seat. He said that the most annoying parts was when I, I hang on to the car door, like I'm hanging on for dear life when he's turning. But it's wild because Seamus is the fourth of my kids. So I've had to teach four teenagers how to drive four years in a row, and they each have to have 60 hours of driving. That's a lot of being a passenger in a car with a teenager who does not know how to drive. And I've learned that I loathe it. And he was cracking up and I said, I loathe this. He's like, you love this? I'm like, no, I loathe this. I can't wait to have your license, pure joy. So go do things that you enjoy or don't enjoy with the people that you love, and it will make for an amazing life. Okay, I hope this helps you out. And remember, if you're looking for help on this journey, thousands of people have come out of the screen with my programs. There's a small program, which is an introduction, and many, many, many people have taken that. And it's a good start if you wanna have a low investment and a low time commitment, but you can get your feet wet. In that program, there's a coupon code to be able to go up to the larger programs and get your investment back. I'm here to help you and I have programs of different shapes and sizes so that we can do that. In the largest program, the first step is a meeting with me. That way we get on the same page personally and I walk you through that program and I help you to succeed. You can have group coaching with me so that we meet once a week. That is the best way to actually come out of the screen and create the life that you love. Okay, uh, I hope you have an awesome week. Until next time, I'll see you then.